Hi, today I'm going to show you how I use Word to build a descendancy tree, basically to chart my DNA matches so I can see how they connect to each other. We're going to start by going to Insert and then Smart Art. And my choice is this hierarchy, and I choose this one here that says Labeled Hierarchy and say OK. Now, personally, I don't really use this part on the outside, so I'm going to click and hit Delete. Click, delete, click, delete. Now you can see this tree starting at the top and building down. I'm going to label this person. I just click on it and label them the MRCA, which is what we call the most recent common ancestor. And so all these DNA matches are going to be tracing back to this particular couple. We're going to assume it's a couple. Now I can start typing in these. I'm going to go ahead and put child number one, child number two. And you can see how it automatically changes the size of the text or the font so that everything fits nicely in these boxes. Now, if I need more children, so we're gonna put a couple more children, I can click on anything and say, add shape. And that one happened to add it um, there, but here we have it below. And so instead I wanna promote it so it's on that same layer. So if you wanna promote, it's gonna go up a level. If you want to demote, it's gonna go down a level. Let's put child number three and child number four. And now I'm also going to go ahead and change the layout of my page to make it a landscape instead. So we can get a wider chart. And you can see it's now landscape. And I'm going to click on this and I can make this bigger. And it will keep adjusting as we go. So now let's add some grandchildren. So we've got some grandchildren here. We can say grandchild number one grandchild number two. And we will still call this grandchild number three, even though it's from this second child. Let's say they only had the one child. Let's go back to Smart Art Design and add a shape here and add another and another. He's going to have, he or she's going to have three. Grandchild number four, grandchild number five, and grandchild number six, and then we will have just a single child from grand, from child number four, so add a shape, oops, add a shape, and grandchild number seven. Now, if you were using the leads method, you would usually be having uh, second and third cousins, so it would be descendants of these grandchildren. So we're going to add some of these DNA test takers. I'm trying to get the gray box off. Not There we go. So let's click on that. We're going to add a shape and it went level instead of down. So we want to demote it. We want it to go down and we're going to say test taker number one. And I always put the amount of DNA. So we could say this is um, 355 centimorgans. And I also changed the color. And so I'm going to change the format and I'm going to say this is a test taker so it stands out. I'm not sure why this is not, it's leaving everything gray. Interesting. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we've got this test taker. Let's say over here we're going to go back to Smart Art Design, add a shape, and it's in the wrong place. We need it to drop down below that child instead. And so let's say this is great grand. I'll just call it number 2A because it's the first grandchild of number 2. And we're going to say one of their children is the test taker. So I'm going to, again, I hit add a shape and now demote. And we're going to put test taker number 2. And they share 114 centimorgans. And I want to change that shape to orange. So I'm going to go to format. And we could pick a color from here. Or I'm doing my blue and orange. And then we're going to come over here to grandchild number three, and we can add, we need to go back to Smart Art, add a shape, and it's parallel instead of down, so I need to demote it, and we can put test taker number three, and I'm going to, oh, let me give you a tip there. So if I hold the shift and then enter, it will go to the next line, um, and it'll make the break just nice and clean. Let's say they're at 276 centimorgans, and I want to change that shape to orange. Child number four, let's go back to Smart Art Design, 
add a shape and we want to demote it and then add a shape and we want to demote it. And let's say that this, I don't really need to fill this in. That would be great grand two or four A, <laughs> but let's say test taker number four and they are at 97 Sin Morgans. So I'm kind of sticking with the leads method where these people would be between 90 and 400 Sin Morgans. Let's say there aren't any, well, I, would, I wouldn't have put it here if I wouldn't have had a test taker. So we're going to add a shape to moat and I'm not going to keep coming up with names, but test taker number five or mounts <laughs> number five, we go. Um, let's say 199 Sin Morgans. It's funny coming up with names or numbers when I'm doing presentations sometimes. It's like, oh, what kind of number can it be? Then we're going to go back to Smart Art, add a shape, demote, and let's, let's make this another uh, layer down. And we've got test taker number six. And they're at 107 Sin Morgans. I'm always afraid I'm going to have the same number again, which wouldn't be a problem. But um, And then we'll have one more smart art design, add shape, and we're going to demote. And here's test taker number seven. And again, that shift enter. And then I'm going to say 113 Sin Morgans. And I'm going to go to the format and change the shape to orange. So that's one way to do that. And there's other things we could do. So let's do it. So if, if you wanted to print this out and make it nice and neat and not use so much ink, this is something we could do. We could go Control A. I'm on Windows. It's probably Command A for Mac to select everything. And here I want the text on everything to change to black. And then we want the fill on all of these to be no fill. So shape fill, no fill. And then we want the shape outlines we could say they're all going to be this blue, but we want them wider. So I'm going to come here and say the weight, and I'm going to go up to about, that's too much. I'm wanting something that would print out nicely. Let's do that. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to change the color of that one to orange and this one to orange. Now, usually I can hold shift, but some reason it's not letting me do that. So orange. And then when I print these out, it will um, highlight these. So that can be very helpful. And if I was going to do this, I would probably want to come up here and put a label on it. Oh, we've even outlined the box. I might say, come here and put um, the title. Let's say uh, DNA matches for Richard from MRCA of uh, John and Julie Smith. And then when I printed this out, I would have it with me. Now, one other thing I've thought of, we could also get rid of, I don't like the orange box. So we could format and uh, shape outline, no outline. There we go. That's better. And then I would probably add a space. <laughs> okay. So the other thing we could do, if you'd rather have each child colored a different child color, we could also do that. So we're going to go back to this original. And this time, instead of what we did, we're going to, this time it's working. I'm holding the shift key down and I'm clicking on each of these. And we're going to change each child to a different color. So here we've got shape fill. Let's say this one is going to be green. And child two, I'm holding that shift and clicking on each of them. And this one will be purple. They will be purple. And then for child three, I'm holding that shift down and clicking on each cell, each person. And I can make this group um, that color blue. And then we've got here, and I'm gonna choose another color. And we have, let's do red. Wow, that's bright. Maybe we'll do this red. <laughs> and we could have done a better job. Maybe we even change this to black. Okay. And we still could change the color. I really like changing the color of these test takers. So we could do different things. We could change, try changing the text to black. Sorry about that. Um, if we went here and change the text to black, I'm not sure that I like that. We could make it larger. But you see, there's so many different things we can do to make this chart where we can examine our matches and see how they're really related to each other. And that's a key principle I teach is 
we create clusters, whether you're doing the leads method, you're doing an automated clustering tool like auto cluster or the Collins leads method. If you're doing a Gephi chart, which some of you know what that is, or you're just looking at the shared matches of a match, first you cluster your matches and then you need to see how they're related to each other. And then you figure out how they're related to you. So this is how I picture how they're related to each other. Because yes, we can put it in our ancestry tree, which is where most of us are working, but it really helps to have this picture and be able to look at it in this format. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And I'd love for you to sign up for my newsletter, like and subscribe, and I'll link to some other videos that you might find helpful. And I hope to see you next time.